WitchKing.com. Here's another sword from back in the day. This is from 2005. This is Ridley Scott's Kingdom of Heaven. Anyway, this is the Sword of Renald. And in my opinion, this is probably the best looking sword out of the, the four that were made by Museum Replicas. That is just a beauty. Anyhow, this thing, like I said, it's about a decade and a half old. Of course, this is officially licensed. There's your COA and your plaque. It does come with L brackets. These are extremely rare. <clears throat> Excuse me. Really hard to come by. Anyhow, like I said, 2005 is when these were around. Oh yeah, one thing to note is these blades were clear-coated to keep them from rusting because they are a definitely a fully functional high-carbon tempered steel. It is a 1085 tempered to a 52 HRC, which of course is your hardness rock wool cone. So yeah, this is not a wall hanger. It is fully functional. And of course, they don't do the clear coating anymore. I don't know why. It's really nice to keep it from rusting, especially being 15 years old. And if you can see there, there's the old 3D holographic piece sticker. They just throw on these swords. But yeah, look at that hilt, man. That thing is just gorgeous. Damn. Damn beauty. Anyhow, um, this was Renald, and this was his blade. There were four different swords that Museum Replicas crafted. And again, this one has got to be my favorite. That pommel is, is just sinister, and that leather-wrapped hilt... Spiral hilt, weathered, just gorgeous. It's a beauty. Anyway, it's about 40 inches long. But Renald is one of the main antagonists in the film. He's my favorite antagonist because he's an absolute badass. No, not a whole lot of mercy with this guy. He just doesn't give a damn. But yeah, he's associated with the Knights Templar. And he has a lot of hate. He likes to kill and slaughter, uh... As many people as he can, apparently. Anyhow, well, that's pretty much it. This is an archaic sword. Very hard to find. If you can find one, I'd say pick one up because it is just a masterpiece. Let me get my hand in here. I'm going to show you that this is a one-handed sword. Hang on one sec. Let me change hands here. All right, here it is. But yeah, it has an excellent flex to it. And that again, that's the clear coating. Not bad. You can't even tell it's clear coated. Yeah, I wish they still did that. Del 10 out of Italy. I just bought a couple of their swords and they still do the clear coating. It's just with these high carbon steel swords, you don't want them to rust. Especially being 10, 15, 20 years old. Oh yeah, there's your L brackets for your plaque. Anyway, these little numbers, obviously, you know that. They screw in here. Common sense will tell you that, but but yeah, look at that. That spiral, and it feels really good in your hand. My hands are large, but the sword feels really good, really easy to wield. This one is blunt. They give that as an option to have them sharpened or not. 
and of course this being that 1085 high carbon steel it will hold a crazy wicked sharp edge so yeah for your fans of this classic flick again Renaud was my favorite antagonist slash villain in the movie And that's pretty much it. But just to give you an idea of the time frame, if you don't remember from the movie, Renault did die in 1175. And of course he was French. He was the son of a French noble family. And he joined the Second Crusade in uh, 1147, settled in the Kingdom of Jerusalem, served in the Royal Army as a mercenary, badass mercenary. Alright, well, I can't stop looking at this blade, but I have to cut this short. There you have it. Officially licensed Sword of Renald. Just a kick-ass masterpiece.